quite as bad as you feel like it is deadly or whatever. No. Watch that. We have Wavery 64 here. If I'm breaking my own rules. Turn down the volume a bit. Alright, so this is all a water level. This is so all year, championships. Okay, so it actually starts on reset, so on go. Three, two, one, go. So first thing I'm going to explain is the version. Oh, what am I... Where are my settings? Oh. Oh, whoops. Alright, so this is the Japanese Rumble re-release. I'm playing it because it has a little bit better frame rate and the leg is handled a little bit better. It's been optimized in the code. So at the start of every race, I can get max power and I mixed it, missed it there. So this game actually has a time trial history of about 20 years. Uh, the first recorded runs were in 1997 by Mario Kart 64 runners uh, Jason Walls and Kevin Booth. The game was pretty much beaten by Jason Walls until about 2006 when a man called Illu came along. Illu is part of the elite uh, speedrunning, so it's uh, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. He started uh, destroying this game for a while until about 2010 when a good Kirby 64 speedrunner, Hayate, a, a good buddy of mine from Japan, uh, he's one of the top Kirby 64 runners and Wave Race runners as well. So around 2012 he created this category where you complete all of the championships in a row. There's that max power I missed the first time. So around the time Hayate created this category in 2012 we had the Emergence of the current champion uh, Shibipod. Shibipod currently holds 34 of 36 time trial records and all of the real time rec uh, records. So a lot of this game comes down to reacting as to how the waves are forming in front of me. So there's not really there's set routing as to where I should go, and that actually changes between the difficulties as well as the wave conditions on some courses and they also change the buoy settings. Uh, sometimes they're closer apart. This on normal it's a little bit easier so it actually gets di more difficult as the category goes on. No, I actually went out of uh, bounds there to skip a couple of buoys and go straight to the finish line. <laughs> it looks like a mistake almost, but. So Illu, I mentioned earlier, this is his baby for this uh, course. It's Drake Lake. The music on here is great. If you mess up a little bit on this line, you can really lose a lot of time here. Yeah, it's similar to Mario Golf. There's a lot of just jazz tunes, uh, kind of elevator jazz. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks jazz, that's right. So there's a very active uh, but small community for this. So shout out to the Wave Race 64 community keeping me in it. 
So Japanese and English both have uh, 1.0 releases and they're essentially the same except the Japanese has Japanese text. In the Rumble re-release, which I'm playing now, they improved the frame rate slightly, uh, optimized the game, and they also added Rumble support. In the time trial mode in this version, you also get a Dolphin Ghost, which wasn't available in the original release. Yeah, this is the definitive version of Wave Race 64. So in this level, this is probably my favorite level. You can dive underneath a wall and take a shortcut, but it's very difficult. So I'm going to see if it, the option is there, and then I'm going to try it anyway, because... I have a, a nickname, the Dive King, in this community. Uh, I'm really good at it, but it's still very difficult. So this lap, I don't go for it. It's actually faster not to. That wall there, you go underneath. So to go along with my story, I left off in 2012 when ShibiPod started. He actually came in and bodied everyone including Hayate and Illu except for that Drake Lake level I mentioned. Illu still has the record from that even though he started in 2006. Yes! The dive! <laughs> There's more dives coming later and as the we're gonna be playing the same courses over and over again with the addition of one each championship but the routing every time I go over them changes. So, let's see. Oh, nice. Yes! <laughs> that is better than any of the runs I had in practice, honestly. <laughs> so, I'm saving, like, I'm actually on PB pace by about 10 seconds right now. I actually know about 8 seconds because I crashed on Drake Lake. Yeah, a speedrun.com uh, slash WR64 has all the records. We have a very active uh, Discord server. There's always chat in there and sometimes too much. I can't keep up. <laughs> so, this game kind of has two modes. This is the championship real-time speedrunning mode but uh, the time trial is much more popular so usually you would post time trial records in there and then also on speedrun.com slash wr64 <laughs> that's funny uh, the, there's a two player mode and in the two-player mode, it removes the trans, uh, the ability of the waves to be transparent to save on processing power. And it also removes the arrows above the buoys and also kind of the black and yellow striped part at them. So it's it, you can play multiplayer, but the frame rate's worse and it barely runs. This. This uh, game was advertised to run at 80% of the uh, CPU usage for the N64 and was a launch game to show the power of the N64 in 1996. Yeah, I, I love the way the aesthetics have aged and the music's always great. Yeah, good look. This is still considered some of the best wave physics in video games ever. I like this little uh, PVM you got here. It's a nice setup. There's ad yeah, there's Fanta ads. Uh, that's actually one difference I forgot to mention. In the 1.0 version, there was Kawasaki ads, and then they pulled their... Um, they pulled their sponsorship and apparently uh, Coke w uh, came in with Fanta and I think Coke owns Fanta but yeah they came in and decided to put their ads up here so 
There's a completely orange water level called Sunset Bay that we'll be going over a couple more times. And you could almost swear it's Fanta. <laughs> Yeah, the advertising, it kind of makes it, it's one of the first things in sports games where you have advertisements like they would in real life. For a real life uh, jet ski racing competition, they'd have advertisements for the sponsors. So I think that's a pretty nice touch, honestly. always adds a touch more to like the atmosphere. Yeah. It could, it very well could have been the first advert uh, game for advertising. 1004, that's well, nice. So, so when Hayate made this category, uh, we've stuck to the rules that he's made, and you actually watch the ending cutscene for each of these, so this gives me a little bit of break, which is a good thing because when it starts getting a little bit more difficult, it's really hard to keep keep together. Each of these cutscenes is a little bit different. This time there's no cup to be seen. He's just kind of standing on the podium, celebrating, looking at his competitors. Everyone else looks so thick. Like big boy. Yeah, he's a thick boy. <laughs> so, he's really fat, which means that he's the fastest character, but he's also the most difficult to handle, which is part of the challenge in this game. This speedrun, yeah. Uh, the faster you're going with this character, it's much more difficult to get around the corners. Uh, w there's four championships at the end of the first fourth championship when I cross the finish line on the last course it's time getting really good max power consistency that's a one frame trick and it runs at 20 FPS so So the routing has changed a little bit here. There's kind of a little bit more uh, tight buoy placement. So your line needs to be a little bit better. It's really easy on this course, but uh, as it gets on to expert, some of the buoy placements are quite difficult to deal with. And then there's kind of a surprise for the last championship that differentiates this game from most other racing games on the N64. So with general movement, I'm trying to stay on the wave surface at all times. And one of the tricks I can do to do this uh, in, is to tap the B button. This actually brings me closer to what I call the base plane of the water. So uh, where the waves are being formed from, it just brings you down essentially. Well, when I crash, which I will crash <laughs> eventually, uh, hopefully not, but I'm, I have realistic expectations. Y you'll slow down to about 30 kilometers an hour, and at full speed I'm going at uh, approximately 120 to 130 kilometers an hour. So you actually lose a lot. So this is the first instance of the change in routing. Uh, I'm going to, there's more waves here, there's more buoys, they're tighter together, and this culminates in a lot of difficulty. So this is what I was talking about with Fanta Bay, there's a, it's, <laughs> so I'm going to skip that buoy this time. You're allowed five buoy misses, and part of the rules of this category is that you can't retire, and you can't reset the console to skip the championship so if I miss all five on a single course then technically I've gone outside the rules if that were to happen I just keep playing like it didn't happen but I don't think I'll do that 
I had pretty good runs in practice, so. Pardon me? Uh, it'll actually retire you, so you'll get zero points on the course. You still can, uh, but you won't get this final point screen adds them up. If I were to miss a couple, it wouldn't it wouldn't mean I'd play second at the end, but it would break the rules of the category. And the reason that's not done is so that we don't just skip a whole bunch of the harder levels. So you actually have to play the whole game instead of just retiring on a bunch of levels and making it shorter. A little bit different routing through this post section here. It's pretty difficult. You can, if you hit one of those posts, you're losing at least three seconds, more like five to seven on average. I forgot that the uh, cartridge save is based on the console, so I forgot that I'd have to put in my settings at the start, and I'm going to be setting a record for every single one of this, so when Billions goes to play this game, which, uh, which I'm sure he'll just pick this up right afterwards and start competing with me on time trial for sure. Yeah, you shouldn't use the character that I'm using though in casual play because it makes it very difficult just to complete the game so just pick the default guy if you want to just try out this game I also have a very detailed tutorial series on YouTube of about 35 videos I believe and that that goes over everything from the basic controls picking up the controller all the way into advanced techniques and routing and everything you need to compete on the level I'm at. <laughs> so uh, this is be this uh, event's actually being held in Video Game Trader. I actually used to go here as a kid when I was growing up all the time. This this place, yes, that we're in right now. Let's see if I can get this dive. I shouldn't be talking right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those dives, I'm making them look easy now. <laughs> Maybe I'll miss one later. But... See, I, I hit once and I actually recovered from that pretty well. That was a pretty minor uh, crash. So... Like, that one too. <laughs> the gate actually opens up on laps 2 and 3 in the hard and expert difficulty. So I only have to do the dive once. I actually wasn't planning on doing any of them at the previous one. So this is a worse crash. That's probably about seven seconds. There are uh, there is no mechanic for uh, breaking your vehicle. You just get so slow that you literally can't even compete with the other runners. Well, it just it just makes you slower. That's all. So now for hard mode, there's a shortcut that's opened up on this level, which means you can do it to skip a little bit of time, but it's a lot more difficult. Usually I'd go on that outside one. So this tunnel is very difficult to do without crashing on all three laps, but I think I'm gonna do it pretty well. Oh. So I accidentally activated a trick. Uh, there's tricks in this game and a full stunt mode that you can get score for. And I accidentally uh, activated a barrel roll. So I tried to do a barrel roll. It didn't work. Yeah, wrong game. Wrong game. Shoutouts to DKR Patty, a, a buddy of mine who accidentally was doing barrel rolls and he was having a great time the other day. <laughs> Ugh. 
Okay, that's that's a little bit more like how it's supposed to go. Uh, doing tricks usually slows you down because you you have to be in the air long enough to execute them. Being in the air is slow. Being under the water is slow. So you want to stay on the water surface as much as possible. The one part where tricks are used is that dive. That's actually a trick. And I'm just going to miss that buoy just because. <laughs> Doesn't really save any time, but. So this is really nice music and most people's favorite level just playing it casually if they get this far. So you go over the wall in this difficulty. Changes a little bit up in the uh, expert mode which is next. Yeah, the Kawasaki placement and the Fanta. <laughs> in the virtual console uh, version where it would say Fanta, it actually says Nintendo DS. Yep. They just decided to plug their own product in the game. <laughs> no. Okay. So I just have to take my crashes and go with them as much as I can. Luckily, they haven't been so badly uh, drawn out so far. You can lose 20 seconds on a crash if you're not careful and you do it at the wrong place. Usually in time trial, you'd actually skip that ramp and go underneath the wall. There's a little gap that you can get under the wall with, but that, that's a little... I'm feeling pretty good about the dives I did, got already, so I'm, I'm not going to push it. That's a very difficult corner. You can mess that up really easily. <laughs> Barrel roll. Uh, yeah. Hayami, it's a different Hayami in this game. This one's a guy, and the uh, one in Blue Storm is a girl, I believe. And there is a female character in this, but th she's actually terrible. They made her slow and really bad turning because they just didn't like it. So there's a wave here now. So. She's supposed to be good at turning, but because she's so slow, she really can't compete with the other uh, players. I actually did a drunk uh, all championships run about a week ago with her on a, a PAL version, uh, the European cart, uh, version of this, just so it'd be extra slow. And it ended up as an hour and 15 minutes for completion, whereas my standard time is like 54 minutes and 54 and a half minutes ish that's kind of what I'm expecting from this run the way it's going but almost all the time to lose is at the end because it's getting more difficult the buoys routing is changing a little bit there's waves being added to make it more difficult and keeping my gameplay together is going to be paramount to not losing too much time at the end. This is going pretty well though. So we have another championship cutscene coming up. Let's see if you guys can spot the difference from the last one. Yeah. There she is on the on the right there. Yeah. Amy Stewart. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, she usually doesn't make the podium, so she's made it twice, which is actually a statistical anomaly at this point. So the only difference on hard mode for the cutscene, there should be one more. Yeah, there's one seagull. That's the only difference. There's one seagull. <laughs> like, what is this? It looks the same. I know. You wouldn't put it past me, would you? No, it's the same seagull, but it does a loop. <laughs> Maybe. No spoilers. Oh, I selected the wrong settings. I guess so. I don't really know what happens, but... I, I don't think it saves enough time at this point to go back, honestly. It'll just be completely changing all of my turn rates and the top speed and... Ah, it'd be a little bit of a, a challenge on the go here. We'll see what uh, changes it. I, yeah, exactly. We'll just let it roll. I've never even really played this game casually. I started speedrunning it after only having played it for about 20 minutes as a kid, so... And I just quit because it was too hard and I kept missing buoys and failing, so... Yeah, it, it, it looks pretty smooth when I'm not crashing and there's no waves. So this buoy, this red buoy here is placed at a really awkward angle so you have to go around it. This is expert, and it, it, it gets a lot more difficult than this. Is there a difficulty level? Uh, there is a another difficulty, and I'm going to keep that one as a surprise. Because <laughs> there's something that differentiates it from other N64 racers of the time. Probably just going to be a completely different game. <laughs> 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 uh, Nintendo Developers. I can't remember what their title was. It, it's a really bland title. It's like Nintendo Developers. Something simple like that. It was, it was developed by Nintendo for Nintendo. Any side bets? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a completely different routing from hard because I actually missed this on all three laps because it's so far. Oh, and I, I really shouldn't have missed that one as well too. So I got to be careful. So I had to slow down there. Oh, if you, the waves, the waves can mess you up pretty badly. No, that's not the girl, but I am being beaten right now. It's pretty bad. That was about 12 seconds lost, maybe 15. Like I said, it's very easy to just lose a lot of time. I'm actually not going to miss that one this time because I think the skip at the end saves more time than that. Definitely making it interesting. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm skipping one buoy. Yeah, no, I, I I missed four buoys. That's the max you can miss on every stage, on any stage, without retiring. Yeah, if you miss that max power at the start, you miss about a uh, half second, depending on the course. So this is expert on Drake Lake, and it gets pretty bad through this section here. You have to wind through the posts and hopefully not miss like that. Okay, so I, I missed twice. I just got to not do that again. <laughs> 
Uh, there's never any waves on this course. Uh, to make up for that difficulty, they make the the fog actually goes away around around a minute, so it'll be going away pretty fast, starting to fade out. There we go. Now it's starting to fade out, and it's gone. Yeah, dynamic weather on the N64. Launch title. This was a launch title too, so. It is. I, I really enjoy the music. This music actually got me into speedrunning the game. I was listening to Shivipod play it and I was like, well, why not? Right? It sounds good enough. If I can listen to this for hours with him playing it, I can do the same. Alright, so Marine Fortress again. The dive. We'll see if I can get it. I've, I've hit all the other dives, which I'm really surprised at. So, hopefully. Yeah, actually, I do have different settings, but I'm not going to address that. I'm just going to ignore it and hope it turns out. <laughs> okay, I got it. Oh, I had to clutch it, but... Oh, the box. Oh, no, not the box! Oh, this is the worst. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Okay. I got the dive, though. As long as we got the dive, we're good. I am in, in the first rank on lap two. And now I don't need to do the dive. I did, I got boxed in hard. Took away all my options. I thought maybe I could slip through it because I've never done that, but. Oh. Now it's a competition. He's catching up. Not anymore, though. So there's only one other person that's been able that's done this in had had the ability really and the opportunity to run all championships in marathon. So I'm really not doing too badly. If you're looking to f see what the game like how fast you really can go, definitely check out the time trial runs on speedrun.com/wr64. Uh, some of the strategies are extremely difficult, and yes, max power. So there's a lot more reaction-based play in real time. In time trial, everything's kind of scripted out. The small waves are actually randomly generated in terms of the height, and these larger waves are consistent so and they just run on a cycle yes get a little bit of speed boost from the wave forming there that consistent wave I know it was coming this one it's on a bad cycle so this tunnel again I I haven't been screwing it up which is surprising as I say that <laughs> That actually wasn't even too bad for that tunnel. Oh, um, it, well, well, no, the execution wasn't too bad. It, it could be. Oh, okay. It actually does get worse. Spoilers, but. <laughs> On the next difficulty. Not an optimal tunnel, but. Anything without crashes in that tunnel is a good tunnel. <laughs> oh, I just took extra long corners to go through. Oh, the stream died, yeah. No, I saw that earlier. I got gotcha. you. So the first time we played this course, we went over the wall. This time we go under. 
Again, utilizing the dive mechanic. That's the only uh, stunt. The only use of stunt in speedrunning. But there are really good records for the stunt mode from way far back. And those are held on cyberscore.com. I think it's .net, actually. So I'm going to be taking this ramp to go under the waves. Or under the wall. And... I almost hit the wall there. You you really can hit that wall. It, it like <laughs> if I was just a little bit higher when I did that. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. That could have been a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, I thought they would blow up my first time coming through, and I was real. I was really sad that they didn't blow up, but because N64 explosions are awesome. <laughs> No, they can't blow up. They're just uh, they're just spiny things that sit in the water and block your path. I've actually had some difficulty in practice with this specific section here because there's these really crazy waves. Ooh. So I did better than in practice there, so I'm pretty happy with that. And the dives. This is going well. Banzai! Yep, that's what he says when he passes the... Actually, I think in the English version it says Banzai too, actually. <laughs> actually, it does say alright, you're right. This is the most difficult course in the game. Uh, this ice corner, the first like 20 times you take it, you will get messed up, and hopefully I don't get messed up. That actually wasn't even too bad. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is a very difficult course to even complete. Oh, okay, extra misses. Okay, so I can't take the extra shortcut on the end, but we're good. I love how every lap is a lap record because... I'm playing it on billions uh, N64. Is it actually I somehow I I don't I I really don't know honestly. It's like EE prom is like the the save. Okay, I can't retire, so I have to take this super slow and do casual strats now. Shoutouts to my boy Billions. <laughs> okay, so I actually have to go off this ramp now. Because I can't miss it. Whee! Yeah, that ramp is really slow. Usually you don't do it, but I missed a whole bunch of extra buoys. And that is Glacier Coast. The destroyer of childhoods. I've, I've had, we've had several people enter our community and just like curse out Glacier Coast really badly. This is probably my favorite level on Expert. The changes ma uh, basically has big waves. Uh, yeah, it turned 20 last year, so it's uh, 21 years old now. Uh, yeah, it does have an act. Uh, every, <laughs> every day we're talking on there. Whee! You get to jump. These jumps are actually a little bit faster on these uh, large waves than trying to muscle your way through them. So anytime you have to use a jump, I think that's pretty cool in terms of routing. And I'm just going to miss that buoy because it's slow. And the buoys are in different placements, so it's a little bit more difficult. On each lap in this course, the water level actually goes down. That's another uh, use of kind of environmental uh, changes. Uh, 
Whoa. Nope. <laughs> Holding it together. And that is Expert Championship. One, one more championship to go. One more. <laughs> Expert is where you get stuck as a kid and couldn't get past it. So, now there's a cup. Now there's a cup. But he just leaves it. He called her color change. Yeah. Well, yeah. Stewart didn't make it this time, but uh, Ayami Stewart is her name. So I just used her last name. Oh, making making moves <laughs> on the podium. <laughs> Takes the trophy and shows it off. Yeah. <laughs> I like his butt patch. He has like a, a butt patch. <laughs> it's green, but yeah. This music is when you know when it's very There's lots of seagulls now. Like I said, elevator jazz all the way. Ooh. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much 90s anime opening, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of points for getting in first. So, I've been building up to it. What's the last championship? It's reverse. In most games on the N64 that are racers, you'd unlock mirror mode, and that just switches up the left and right uh, turns. This game's a little bit different. Instead, we play the, the level in reverse, literally. So we take the buoy placements and the wave changes from Expert, and instead you're going backwards in the course. And oh, it makes some of the turns a lot more difficult. That one wasn't too difficult. I just bonked, so. This means a lot more uh, routing for buoy miss strats. There's a, there's a lot of buoy misses in reverse. So I'm gonna be going up to four misses quite often in this championship. This one can be difficult, but it's pretty simple compared to the changes that happen on reverse in the rest of the courses. Just kind of a, an extended slalom. Is there a Fanta cracking open in the background I hear? No. So this is one of my favorite courses in reverse. It's quite different. Features a nice out of uh, bounds section. It's not really out of bounds. It's like out of the track, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, all the arrows are saying I should turn around and go the other way. <laughs> so you get um, max power back so quickly in this section that you can just go out of bounds and save a couple seconds there on each lap. This corner is quite difficult if I crash there, it's pretty bad. So Shibby Pod was uh, the the record holder was giving me some advice as to not take it so risky through the because <laughs> he saw my practice runs 
And basically, I've been ignoring his advice the entire time. <laughs> I went for every dive. I, I got them all, though. <laughs> So he's probably shaking his head watching this right now. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you. Welcome to Milk. Watch the signal. Three, two, one. He's actually doing a 12 hour marathon right now. So shout outs to Shibby Pot. Yeah, him and a couple of uh, buddies from the Wave Race community got together at his house for a 24 hour run. Did a bunch of different games, but mostly Wave Race. Is it benefiting an actual life No. It's just benefiting him, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not raising money for anything. He's not cool like us. Yeah. It's for the kids. Bowie's. Bowie skips for the kids. That slalom section can get difficult pretty quickly if you mess it up but this is one of the best courses for me I actually have a third best time in time trial here okay Whoa, okay <laughs> yeah He's so thick that he just propels himself through the water. <laughs> Going too fast. There's a contrast to the last run. So this is another one I have thirst third place in uh, usually you'd be using a completely different character one who's not so fast and you'd be able to skip underneath the gate but from the other side but it's like a 1 in 12 to 1 in 14 chance when you're on the right line and it's basically the most degenerate level you can speed run individually in this game but it opens up on lap two and three, so I'm able to take the shortcut now. A little bit of an out of bounds section here, saves some time. You use another character because he's a little bit faster when he's completely powered down, and you spend most of this course powered down. It's just faster. I really like that reverse is actually useful. Usually with the mirror mode, you don't really play mirror mode other than to unlock stuff. And then, then you just curse it and never want to return to it again. But reverse actually uh, offers some really unique uh, gameplay experiences if you can get past expert. So I mentioned about the tunnel being a little bit more difficult in the next course. Now I'm going through it in reverse. This is the most difficult course in this run. That corner is hard. This tunnel coming up is very difficult. If I can not crash on all three laps, it would pretty much be a miracle. Okay. And this corner at the end is really difficult because it's blind and there's a big wave that can knock you off course and lose you a bunch of time as well. <laughs> okay, one out of three. Nope. <laughs> That's not too bad though. It can be a lot worse through there. And that t corner was very good as well. So if you slow all the way down like that, it takes you quite a bit of time to speed all the way back up. So pretty much any crash wastes you three seconds. That's actually a pretty good place to crash because then I don't have as much speed going through here.
Okay. So a couple more courses left here, and we'll finish it up. This is the longest course in the game, individually. And it has a couple tight spots. Because it's in reverse. Most of the courses seem like they were pretty well planned out for reverse, but this one is a definite exception. This corner coming up here, you have to go around this spiky mine there and that will often cause you to either crash or miss that buoy. <laughs> I'm going to be going for a 4 buoy miss strat on this course. So if I miss any of these, I'm going to retire, and you're not supposed to do that in this category, so I have to be a bit careful here. Alright, I got it. Uh, second last course coming up here. This is Glacier Coast, but on reverse. This is the most random level. There's several places where the uh, cycle on the small random waves will cause you to lose a lot of time, and this turn is mostly where it is. Oh. Okay, that wasn't very smooth at all. That loses about a second over what I intended to do. Ice Corner is a lot easier in reverse. So this corner, this course is actually easier in reverse, but it's more uh, random elements have uh, an effect on your time. Let's see if I can get this corner right here. Okay, got it. So yeah, one more course after this and timing will be when I pass the finish line. This is another course I'm doing a four miss strat on. Hopefully. <laughs> That's some of that random chance coming into it. I didn't really do anything wrong there, but the game decided it was in the bottom of the random bob cycle, so, or the random wave cycle. Just those small waves. All of the waves are randomly uh, generated in terms of height here. Okay. Yeah, at the when I cross the finish line on the third lap here, it'll be time. Coming in right in estimate time, I <laughs> think. That orca there uh, will actually be, if you're in first all the time, it'll show up there and follow you around the course, kind of. So more animals.
This is another time where jumping over the waves saves a little bit of time rather than just plowing through them. Yeah. So time's coming up when I pass this finish line here. No. 5503, not too shabby. Yeah. Thank you. So shout outs to, yeah, shout outs to our sponsors, uh, the house, venues, everyone. And shout out to Fanta. Shout out to Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Stuart didn't make the podium. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me.